Oh. What's going on, everybody? We're Embrace the Globe 21. Yes, we are. My name is Spencer. And I'm Daniel. Look, we're checking out Geography Now, Iceland. Hey, that's the green one, I think. Yes, and gr Greenland's the ice one, I think. Those, those Vikings. <laughs> I do have plans to be in this country for like three hours coming to and from the United Kingdom in June. So I probably won't have time to fully explore anything no. at all. No. I'll be more busy catching a plane, <laughs> but yeah. I will be there. <laughs> do an airport review. Do an airport hey. review. Hey, here's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Play, play airlines for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, oh, yeah, the airport's great. The duck thing was weird. Like, what? <laughs> No, but um, yeah, I, I you have as much exposure to Iceland as I did uh, El Salvador. Oh, was I, that a connecting flight? It was a connecting flight that I lost. Oh shit! So I had to wait for another plane. Holy so I was holies. in that. I was in El Salvador for sixteen hours. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> yeah, and I was like, well, I guess this is my new home. <laughs> you know, I here. And everyone was like, why don't you leave the airport? I'm like, bro, El Salvador wasn't the safest place at that time. So got I'm going to stay over here. Yeah. And considering what's gone with the, was it volcanoes or political uprising? Oh, it's one and the same. One, Yeah. So hopefully that's not the same case when I go to Iceland. Hopefully not. Hopefully but, not, man. Let's see what Barb's got yeah. to say about it. Yep. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Guys, as you know, I went to Iceland earlier this year, and in all honesty, if you just want to get a real taste of Iceland better than I could ever provide, check out my friend, this guy, Auskir. Subscribe to his channel. He helped me out when I was there, and he knows Iceland. Auskir, check out the Aus. Yeah, keep that one, bro. All for you. <laughs> it's time to learn geography. No! Fish. Fish. That's Fish. their, their go-to recently. Or yeah. we've just been hovering around. Maybe we just hover around the fish videos. Maybe, maybe that is it, but... Y'all let us know if y'all want us to check out that video from the yeah. other guy that he just mentioned. We'll probably go back and look at it if y'all want it bad enough. House gear. All right, Aus cool, gear. man. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So full disclosure before we start, my pronunciation for Icelandic words is gonna suck so bad in this episode. I do not advise you to play a drinking game for every time I mispronounce something. You will get <laughs> alcohol poisoning and you might die. I repeat, you could die watching this. <laughs> So, what, what was the thing you always say? Listen, listen, I'm I'm here. Listen, beautiful, beautiful, strong language. Uh, I don't know if it's going to need some more vowels, but I will provide the correct pronunciation when I see it. <laughs> I guarantee it. Uh, vowels are a good vowels. thing. They they haven't let me down yet. Mm hmm. <laughs> Iceland! Just the name invokes an obvious clue about where it is geographically. First of all, the country is located at the confluence of the Atlantic and Arctic Oceans east of Greenland and just south of the Arctic Circle. The country is divided into six constituencies, three big ones and three of which are confusing because they basically just split up the most populous areas in the west. Reykjavik is the capital and the northernmost capital in the world, which is split into two constituencies, north and south, whereas the- Okay, Reykjavik. That's why yeah. I'm gonna be catching a connecting flight. Hey man. Uh, what was it? What was that song? Come on, by the the Eurovision Fire and Ice, the the so the, the fire the movie, saga, the fire saga. Yeah. Oh man, what was that? Yeah, yeah, ding dong. Yeah, yeah, ding dong. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, beautiful. I mean, man, the scenery in that movie was gorgeous. It was, yeah, it was breathtaking. So, oh, oh yeah. man, okay. <laughs> there we go. The southwest constituency is divided into four non-contiguous exclaves, but they still act as one constituency, not four. So it's six small separate entities that act as three constituencies. Get it? <laughs> no. Great! This was done to help with the imbalance of the sparsely populated outer regions with voting, since about a third of the entire country is located in the Reykjavik metropolitan area. Nonetheless, most of the country still refers to areas being located in the traditional eight region zones, which are divided like this. The country has many domestic airports, but the one large-scale international airport is Keflavik International, and the next two busiest ones are Reykjavik and Akureyri. Reykjavik and Akureyri are domestic airports except for seasonal service to Greenland internationally. Iceland's domain is most... I don't know which one I'm gonna be at, and I'm too lazy to look up what it is. Uh, you're just gonna be there. I'm just you're gonna, just gonna be get. There. You're gonna get off the plane. That's your job. Don't worry about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know where I land. I just know I gotta get off. I just gotta get off the plane. 
mostly encompassed around the main island. However, they do own some smaller islands and archipelagos off their coasts. The most populated ones being Heimei, Hrisei, and Grimsei, and some in the south, like the newest island that just popped up in the 60s, Surtse, which is off limits to anyone except permitted scientists who study it. Otherwise, Iceland may be rugged, but the islanders sure have paved a way for you to see it all. The Ring Road. This guy takes you all around the entire country, and depending on how much time you want to stop and see the sights, it could take you anywhere between four-ish to seven days wow. to complete. Hey, Brandon, you went on the Ring Road, right? Yeah! How long did it take you? Uh, about nine days. Okay, uh, maybe my facts were wrong. Otherwise, some top notable man-made sites and landmarks might include the National Gallery, the Viking World Museum, the stone carvings of Paul Guzmanson, the U.S. Navy D3 plane wreckage site, the Hit Viking Village, the Sea Monster Museum, pretty much all of Akureyri, the Whale Museum, the Design Center, all over the countryside you can find turf houses with grass on their roofs, the country's iconic landmark and beautifully constructed icicle-shaped church, Hit now, as interesting as those man-made sites and landmarks may be, they pale in comparison to what the actual land has to offer. Let's jump into the fire and ice. <laughs> Just like you said, the fire and ice. Yeah. Is that is that like the motto there? Because they have volcanoes and also ice. Lots of ice. Like, what was it? What, what did he say? Like snowman, igloos, penguins, and ice. Ice. That's that. some cool runnings, guys. All right. Yes, yes, I remember because we just recently watched that. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe this is the first video we linked our the ETS Patreon. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me just put it this way. Iceland doesn't need an amusement park or roller coasters because the entire island is just like a wonderland in itself. First of all, Iceland is the 18th largest island in the world and the second largest in all of Europe. The entire country lies transected on the Mid-Atlantic Range, which divides the North American tectonic plate with the Eurasian plate, splitting open about two centimeters every year. You can even see the divide for yourself with your own eyes. Nearby Reykjavik at Thing with the largest natural lake, Thing the land splits open and you can literally walk from Eurasia to North America. Underneath wow, the waters, wow. you can get even closer to the divide at the Silfra, whew, that was easy, known as the clearest water diving spot in the world where visibility can go up to 100 meters. Whoa. Over 80% of the country is mountainous wow. with the tallest point, Kvandalsnukur. 11% of the country is covered with six main glaciers, the largest one in the southeast, Vatnajökull, and the smallest one, which just erupted in 2010, Eyjafjallajökull. With hundreds of volcanoes and about 30 of them are consistently active as the Longest river, the Fjordsau, meanders through the deep central Hofskuller glacier to the ocean. <gasps> so basically, the entire island is. <laughs> he is. Barbs is struggling, hey, man. Hey, he's doing a bang up job. He's he's getting through those names, man. You know, <laughs> half half the battle is just getting through it. Just getting through it. Getting through it. You know. Um, the the problem is there is vowels in there. There's just, A's. There's A's and U's and O's. Just just strewn about. But they're not <sighs> intended as vowels. They're just the shapes. That's it. Maybe it has you had nothing change... to do with the phonetic saying had, of it. Yeah, change of intentional vowels are good. Yes. Something just, like that. Yeah, man. Anyway. <laughs> is geothermal. Everywhere you go, chances are you can probably find a natural hot spring hidden Yay. somewhere in the remote wilderness. Not only that, but Iceland also harbors and capitalizes off of this unique valuable resource as much as possible. When the first Vikings came in, they were like, wow, it is cold in here. I mean, I knew Norway was chilly, but dang. Is there anything here we can use to not like freeze to death? Yeah, they killed a lot of sheep and made more wool clothing, but then eventually they found out how to generate power with the hot springs. Geothermal energy provides- That's the thing I'm looking forward to. If I ever do book a trip where I'm staying in Iceland more than like 30 minutes or yeah. three hours. Hot spring. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would be yeah. awesome. That's that. That's definitely bucket list. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. It's about a quarter of the country's power alone, and the rest is mostly hydroelectric from dams wow. and renewable sources. Nonetheless, only about 1% of their land is arable, mostly confined to the south peripheral lowlands where root vegetables and kale and cabbage wow. and cauliflower are grown, alongside wow. numerous geothermal heated greenhouses that harvest warm climate produce like tomatoes, cucumbers, and yes, even bananas, making Iceland the northernmost banana producing country in the world. Of course, wow. the country also hosts a unique variety of Arctic wildlife like puffins, foxes, seals, narwhals, and the national animal 
animals, the griff falcon, and the famous highly accredited Icelandic horses. By the way, yes, it's true, Iceland is the only country with no mosquitoes. However, they do have two species of midges. <laughs> He said midget. Midge is, which are similar to mosquitoes. And actually, one of the species does actually bite, so it's kind of like having mosquitoes anyway. <laughs> Iceland has biting midget. Keith, just... <sighs> Speaking of which... <laughs> uh, uh, he can't take us anywhere. <laughs> biting midges. Midges, got it. <laughs> you gotta be careful. You gotta take your time getting through that one. Yeah. When explaining the midges. You gotta take your time. Because yeah. you would get the wrong idea of Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how was Iceland? It was great. But man, those midges bite. Like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, you got to stay away. What? <laughs> Did you hear about that? Daniel got bit by a bunch of midges. Like, what <laughs> the fuck? Like, don't go there, man. That sounds <laughs> fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take us anywhere. <laughs> Oh, uh, God. Traditional Icelandic food is, let's just say, even my Icelandic friend said this. This is so disgusting. Listen to Why flavor. would anyone eat this? Yeah, let's just say the Vikings had some very unorthodox tactics when it came to food preservation. Dishes like sheep's head, stockfish jerky, head cheese, sheep testicles, and the famous haukar. <laughs> what is it exactly? Well, let's just say... Hey, so I uh, got the shark, but it's poisonous. Uh, how do I eat it? Hmm. Oh, I know. Let's bury it into the ground until it smells like urine, then dry it out for a couple months, and then cut off the brown crust, and then serve it. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> jump, 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 jump. There are some delicious redeeming Icelandic foods, though. They are known for making some amazing smoke smoked lamb served with bean salad and grilled haddock and herring dishes. You can literally drink almost any water from any stream, pond, or lake, or river in Iceland. The whole island kind of acts like a filtration device for the glaciers. You have wow. places- Yes, yes. That makes sense. Because you have yeah. like glacier water running over volcanic, uh, uh, volcanic rock. rock, which acts like a filter. Yeah, so, yeah. So, holy crap. Kind of the same concept of a Brita filter with yeah. those charcoal filters. Yeah. Yeah. And I've become an avid water drinker uh, in my uh, 30s now. So, like, that sells it for me right That's there. That's awesome. You won't die of thirst. Heck you no. You won't die of thirst. So Heck there you no. go. That's good. That's what I'm talking about. This is like the smooth conical Kirkufell mountain. Brandon has a tattoo of that. The Skafta crystal ice cave in Vatnajökull. The Kjolur trail in the highlands. Literally like every five kilometers you'll find a waterfall. And don't forget the geysers in the south. Pretty much all the West Fjords region is empty and beautiful for you to explore with no tourists. The sea monster of Kvitsurkur, Dragni Island, Gryokjau Caves, Mayfell Green Volcano on Black Sand Beaches, Krafla Whoa. and Naumskarth, Drangsnes Hot Tubs, the largest hot spring, Kunukver, and the open exposed fossils of yeah. If you went, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. I feel them. I feel yeah. them. But that's beautiful, bro. Yeah, uh, got the visual part of it. So I'm sold now. Yeah, it's <laughs> just the uh, Barb's uh, pronunciation <sighs> is just the I, cherry on top. I just felt it. I felt it when he tried. I'm like, bro, just get through it, man. You, I, I get, I get him. I'm like, you got my support, man. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me, you got my support. I am not going to throw shade on his pronunciation because I would sound exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Talk to Croatia. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> Went against my disclaimer and played that drinking game. You should be in an ambulance by now. Speaking of drinking, Icelanders are awesome people to socialize with. Let's meet them, shall we? All right. Now, if the Nordics were a family, Iceland would be like the little brother that got lost at sea from a shipwreck, got stranded on an island, and became a wild man. First of all, Iceland has a population of about 335,000 people and is the most sparsely populated country in Europe. Dang. About 92% of the country identifies as ethnically Icelandic, about 4% are Polish, and the remainder are other immigrants from all over, mostly Nordic, West European, and a few Asians mixed in as well. They also use the Icelandic kroner as their currency, they use the Type C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, being Icelandic is actually very unique genetically in contrast to the rest of their Nordic cousins. Basically, way back yeehaw, the Vikings were like, hey, we're sick of Norway. Let's make a new home. Oh, but wait, we need women. But most of the Norwegian women were like, mm -mm. 
So they made a quick stop to the British Isles and kidnapped a bunch of Irish and Celtic women and brought them over. About 70% of all their women, that is. To this day, a wow. typical Icelander actually has a portion of Irish or Celtic roots in their blood. Now, obviously, if you are one of the few lucky people that hasn't ended up in an ambulance yet, you'll have noticed that the Icelandic language is incredibly unique, often touted as one of the hardest languages in the world to learn. I mean, half the time, the letters make no sense. F can make a V or a P sound. Sometimes P and a T make a F sound. Sometimes the G makes a W sound. These two letters both make a Th sound. And sometimes when there's two L's, it makes like a <laughs> sound. Most Nordic peoples have a hard time cracking the Icelandic code, except for the Faroese people on the Faroe Islands. They seem to have a similar sense of pronunciation and grammar as the Ice. I I am um, I have very recently been exposed to the Icelandic or not the Icelandic Faroese language. Which band? One of, the, one of the artists that I cover is is called uh, Ivor, and she oh. sings in Faroese, and okay. it's a gorgeous language. But I'm like, yo, some of those song titles. I I, I get it, I get it, but. I can't, I can't even try. Sometimes there's like a little A looking thing in the title. I'm like, ah, it is what it is. Hey, you <laughs> see it? I see it. We all see it. That's the name of the song. Yeah. If y'all want to see that, Daniel's uh, channel is linked in the description. Aries oh, yeah. in the Nation. Yeah. Recently a fan of Ivor. For yeah. sure. For sure, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's crazy how he mentions uh, Faroese. And that's crazy how little... Uh, like... I was about to say how little people, no, not little people, the small the amount, <laughs> the midges, the midges, no, a small amount of people live there. That's yeah. 30, what is it? Well, how much? 300,000? 300, 335,000 at the that's, time of this video. That's nothing. That's yeah. nothing. Yeah, we have cities that are bigger than that in this country. Bro, we just checked out, what did we just check out on the channel that had like a million in like a small city? Uh, Philippines? But, uh, yeah, I think... Was it? Yeah, I think it was. I think Manila. It was. Yeah, Man Manila yeah. is like the most densely populated uh, thing. And I'm like, yo, your country... Your country has no one. That's almost, yeah. that's almost as much as the state of Montana as a whole. Pretty much. That, yeah. Yeah. Whew. That's... Yeah. Just moving on. Icelanders. Icelandic and Faroese are the closest languages to ancient Norse out of all the Nordic languages. If you give them a script written in ancient Norse, chances are they could probably understand it. Whereas wow. Norwegians, Swedes, and Danes are like, ha! Nope. Now, because of its small population, Icelandic culture is very communal. Chances are everybody either knows each other or they know somebody who knows another person. Therefore, an ingrained sense of trust kind of roots itself in the mindsets of most people. This is why Iceland has one of the lowest crime rates in the entire world, sometimes topping off at number one. And also, as of 2014, they were elected the world's most peaceful country, according to the Global Peace Index. Oh, and by the way, in Iceland, nobody technically has a surname. They just adopt the last name dependent on their father's first name, and they just add son or daughter after it. So, for example, oh. a man named Alex with a father named, I don't know, Bjarki would be named Alex Bjarkison. Or if it was a woman, her last name would be Bjarki Dotter. Sorry, Bjarki, you just popped in my head. You rock, man. Hope you're doing well. Icelanders are thrill seekers. They live in an extreme landscape, so they make the best of it and they will ski, paraglide, rappel, skate, dive, jump, and experience anything that gives them adrenaline. Some of the top notable Icelandic people might include founders of Iceland, Ingolfur Arnarsson and his wife, Hedvig and brother Kjörlif, Leif Eriksson, the first president, Svein Björn. Son, musicians Sigur Ross of Monsters and Men, Emiliana Torini, Moom, Goose Goose, of course the most famous resident Bjork, Oscar nominated director Friedrich Thor Friedrichsen, Hut Thor Laxness, handball superstar Olafur Stefansson, Magnus Uren Schiven, Fian Paul, and of course everyone's favorite strongman Hapthor or Thor the Mountain, Julius Björnsson. Now, as small as Iceland is, they've made a huge impact in the world's media outlets. Somewhere in the late 90s and early 2000s, word spread fast, and to this day, tourism is almost getting out of hand as they get over three times their own population in tourism every Whoa. year. Hotels need to be built, staff need to be hired, and diplomacy is key in operating the whole deal. Which brings us to... Wow. All right, before we get to that, that's... Tourism's booming, so... Maybe I shouldn't visit? But you know what, though? Think about that. That's great news for the country. I mean, it's like... There's a, li a long list of pros and cons. Pros, you get new money into the infrastructure of the country yeah you get new money in hotels get built like jobs are created job security is there that's great news but you know what it brings as well 
Yeah, is undesirables. Yeah, and also just a, a basically a raping of the land. You know, like here it is. This is a national park. We gotta, you know, we gotta basically take it and make it picture perfect, which it already is. You know, it's like, um, like, like what Florida does to the Everglades. You know, like yeah. just bastardize the beauty of nature for consumption. Yeah, or just the rest of America does to any <laughs> farmland. Any farmland, correct. Yeah, correct. Pave paradise, oh. put up a parking lot. Great That's... song. Now I can't stop hearing that. Thank yeah, you. it's not Damn just it. a song from Joni Mitchell <laughs> and later on Counting Crows. Yeah. It was pretty much accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. Let's see who they're friends with. Hmm. Now, Iceland has a problem. A good problem. Too many people like him now, and it's all happening too fast. First of all, Iceland has always had good ties to the USA and Canada. The US was the first to recognize Iceland as a state after independence, and both countries not only give some of the biggest business, but also house the largest communities of Icelanders outside of Iceland. Finland is like the mysterious, cool, new rebel friend that they just made. They enjoy both being outsiders because although they are both Nordic, they are not considered Scandinavian. When it comes to humor, they totally get each other and click instantly with dry, semi-dark undertone jokes. Sweden is like the old Older brother that they love, but is too busy working on his flow charts to hang out with. Denmark is close, although Danes practically have no idea what skiing is, considering their flat landscape. Most Icelanders learn Danish in school first before they learn English, even though they think it's pretty useless. When it comes to their best friends, most Icelanders I've talked to have said Norway and the Faroe Islands. As mentioned before, Icelanders have historical roots to Norway, and the two have had very close relations, especially since they both can relate to being subjugated under the Danes at one point in time. The Faroe Islands are like their weird cousins that totally get them and love to hang out with. It's a magical moment when an Icelander meets a Faroese person. In conclusion, Iceland is a land where cold meets hot, old meets new, small yet big, horrible fermented shark meets your dinner plate. I hope you're still alive, and if you are, stay tuned, because the big guy, India, is coming up next. Nice. Man, That was a lot. It was a lot in a almost 12 minute video right yeah, there. Man. All right, y'all, well, let us know, Icelanders that are watching, let us know how we as an American tourists cannot stick out like a sore thumb. How's how can we be a good tourist? House guest. Or house, house guest. Yeah. A good tourist. Obviously, you know, there's some weird foods there, and but a lot of great scenery, a lot of uh hot hot springs. It's like the nature lover. If, but, if you're love the city metropolitan life, you probably skip that one. But yeah. like, if you're into hiking and being outdoors and just that Oh, that's everything. Yeah. You tolerate the cold. I, my plan also now is in December to fly to Ireland, and I'll probably have a uh, stopover in Iceland then. So should I extend my stay there is Ooh. probably the question. And what should I do? And how can I uh, – do I need to – what Icelandic terms do I need? And are y'all good in English? There's a lot of questions there, so help us out down below. I, I, I think that's a very valid question. Uh, especially as an only English speaker going to a non-English country. A Nordic English country, speaking, basically. A Nordic country, non-English speaking country. Because there's there's places that we've learned on this journey that their usually first or second language is English. So yeah. you, will, you will more than likely find someone that can uh, communicate with you in English. Yeah. And there's no way you're going to pick up one of the hardest languages in the world <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a year. Especially in our 30s now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks in advance for those comments. Consider yes. also subscribing and watching another video. And what else, Dan? Yes. Unplug and do something epic, guys. See y'all next time. Later. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this. <laughs>